Is the sharpening in Topaz Denoise AI good enough, or do I always have to use Sharpen AI with it? I've addressed this question in older videos, but today, after you watch this video, you'll know the answer whether to use one or both. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Yeah, I want to answer this question once and for all and really make it clear so you'll know exactly if you need to use Sharpen AI along with Topaz Denoise AI or can you just get along with one or the other. Hey, and by the way, if you'll take a notice here, this is from the advertisement on uh, the Topaz website of Denoise and I have this section on my screen right now because it says recover detail and eliminate noise. Well, why would I need Sharpen AI if I can recover detail? Which is a good question, right? And I'm gonna show you the answer to that today because I believe there is confusion out there. Do I use both products or just one product? Because they both reduce noise and they both sharpen. And by the end of this video, you'll know when to use Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, or both. And to answer that question, I have two different examples. This image right here was shot at ISO 2500. I'm going to zoom in. So it's really noisy. I'm zoomed into 300%. Oh, that's 200%. Let me go into 400%. See all that noise in there. But it, as you can see, it's relatively sharp. It's not totally sharp, but we're going to answer the question, or I'm going to answer the question, will denoise be able to denoise this and sharpen it all with one product? So stay tuned for that. And then I have an image I've already processed, which is really going to put this answer to bed. And that is this image of this butterfly. It's very soft. I'm going to zoom in to, let's zoom into 400%. As you can see, it is super soft, right? Let me bounce back out to about 200% now. As you can see, it's very soft. It's a low ISO image. It's only like a 500 ISO image. But I ran this into Topaz Denoise AI and denoised it and also sharpened it with 100% sharpening. And we'll see if it can really take care of the softness of this image. And then I'm going to also run it into Sharpen AI, which I've already done actually, by the way, so you don't have to watch me do that. But you're going to actually see which product does the best job in this butterfly image. Topaz Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, or does it even really matter? You're going to know by the end of this tutorial. I'm working from Lightroom today. Now, if you watch my tutorials, you know I like to use linear profiles. When you use linear profiles, you can't send your images into either Sharpen AI or Denoise AI as raw files because the linear profiles will not work. So I'm working from Lightroom. I'm going to send this image right into Topaz Denoise AI. Now, I just have some basic adjustments on here. Nothing over the top here. No texture or clarity or dehazing on here whatsoever. Just minimal adjustments. And as far as detail, no sharpening, no noise reduction. I use the default Lightroom setting of 25 for color noise reduction because I've done a lot of experimenting with it. And to me, I get the best results when I do that. So you could try that out for yourself and see if you are happy with that or do it the way you like. But anyway, just some basic adjustments. With that being said, let's send this into Topaz Denoise AI. I'm just gonna right click on my image and go to edit in and find Denoise AI right here and click it. Now I send mine always as a TIFF file. You have a choice, PSD, JPEG, or TIFF. I always use TIFF because I generally send my images into Photoshop later. And then I use the Pro Photo color space. You could use any of these color spaces. Adobe RGB is not a bad one to use. A lot of folks use that, but I like to use Pro Photo RGB. You can even use sRGB if you want to, or your display. And then I always uh, use 16 bits uh, for the bit depth because you get a better Photoshop uh, edit if you do that. You want to give it as much bits as you can, but you have your choice between eight, between 8 and 16. And then as far as resolution, I'm going to leave it here at 300, but I generally put mine at 360 because I have an Epson printer and that's what it likes. And I never use compression. And now all I have to do is click on edit and it'll fire up Topaz Denoise AI and we'll go ahead and remove the noise on this. And also we'll recover the detail. We'll see if it works. Now here we are inside of Topaz Denoise AI and I have my settings set to auto my AI model is set to auto as well as my model preferences 
And for this image, ISO 2500, it's a high ISO, but not super high. And honestly, standard will work just fine. I'm zoomed into 100%, but let's go ahead and zoom this into, let's go into 400% so we can really see. And let's move this around. I'm going to move into a smoother area out here so you can really see it. I like to use this mode right here, the split view, because I can drag this across and I can see there's my noise on the left and on the right is where it's eliminated, okay? So I can drag this across and you can see it's totally eliminating my noise. You may see a slight amount of noise in here, which I like, and I've been experimenting with this lately. And try this out yourself. I used to give myself just a perfectly smooth background. And if I take this Recover Original Detail and drag it the whole way to the left, that background goes totally smooth. But I find it's good to leave a little bit of a grainy feel to the image. It makes your image look a little sharper and I think better. So I usually use around like 40 to 50 on this recovered detail. Try that out and see what you think. But as you can see, the noise is gone because compare the left to the right. So that's a little tip for you. Now let's drag over into the area here where we're supposed to recover detail. Now check that out. You can see it's very sharp. Let me go out to um, 200%, but check that out. Now I'm gonna drag this across here, but check it out here. It's slightly soft, but when I move this over, you can see it has definitely sharpened this up. So I will say the answer to our first question is, yes, it will recover detail and it does a really good job. So on this image, would I still need to uh, run it into Sharpen AI? I think the answer to that is no. Now we also have this other slider, Color Noise Reduction. I always leave this to zero, because remember when I was in Lightroom, I told you I use the default setting of 25, and when I do that, I find I never need to touch this Color Noise Reduction. But that's just my workflow. Now as far as the model preferences adjustments, Remove noise and enhance sharpness are auto detected. I'm just going to leave it right where it is because if it ain't broke, I don't fix it. It looks good. If I wasn't getting rid of enough noise, I could bump this more to the right. Or if I felt I needed sharper, I could drag this more to the right as well or to the left if I wanted less sharpness. But I think that looks really nice. On my second image of the butterfly, I took this enhanced sharpness and drug it the whole way to the right to 100% just to show you if the sharpness that was not there in the butterfly could be recovered in denoise. So you don't want to miss that one. Stay tuned. So just like that, I am done. Now, all I need to do at this point is click apply and that'll send us right back into Lightroom. I'm leaving this in real time so you can see it does a really fast job of getting it back in there. And here we are back in Lightroom. Now let me go ahead and check our result. Let me click on the original uh, RAW file. I'm gonna go ahead and click right into this area here. I'm zoomed into 200%. Let's go into 300% and move this around a little bit. But this is the RAW file. Now take a notice of the detail and the noise. You can see it. Now let's click on the result from Topaz Denoise AI. And as you can see, I have just a, you may not even be able to see it, just a slight amount of a little tiny bit of grain. But look at the detail I've recovered in this image. Compare this to the raw file. Here's the raw file. And here is the denoise. So a great job. So there you go. If you have an image that's relatively sharp right out of your camera, do you need Sharpen AI? The answer is absolutely no. You only need Topaz Denoise AI. Now we're going to look at this next example of a butterfly, which here is the original raw file. And as I zoom into it, that's 300%. As you can see, that thing is soft. Can Denoise AI take care of that? Can it recover detail there? Well, we're going to find out in a sec. Well, let's find out. Let me zoom back out. Okay, so the first image is the DNG. This is the DNG, which is a raw file. This is what it looks like after Sharpen AI. Can you see the detail in there? Let me zoom in so you can see it. Look at the detail. Compare it to the DNG. If that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. But this image has totally been recovered with Sharpen AI. But again, here's Sharpen AI. Pretty amazing, right? Now, what about 
Denoise AI, which is this guy right in the center here. Now, remember the Denoise AI, what I did with it was when it was in Denoise AI, I removed the noise, which was hardly any noise, to be honest with you. I probably really wouldn't have even had to remove that noise because it was ISO 500. But as far as the enhanced sharpness was concerned, I jacked it the whole way up to 100%. And this is my result right here, zoomed in at 300%. It couldn't do it, right? But Sharpen AI could. This is Sharpen AI. This is Denoise AI. So there you go. What is Sharpen AI for? Only for issues of focus. If you had camera shake, you know, motion blur, it can fix those problems like nothing else that I know of can. Or just like this image where I totally missed the focus. This is totally out of focus. It can repair those problems. And it is quite amazing. This image is a throwaway image, but now I can use it, which is really great. But if this image was sharp out of camera, I could have got away with just Topaz Denoise AI. I hope I've answered your question now. If the image is sharp in the camera, Denoise AI is all you need to recover detail and denoise it but if it has focus issues like camera shake motion blur type things and soft focus you absolutely need topaz sharpen ai now a lot of people ask the question which do i do first dave do i denoise first or sharpen first i highly recommend that you denoise first and then you sharpen second and another good reason for that is a lot of times with uh, Sharpen AI, we're only using it on certain parts of the image. Like I didn't have to use it on this entire image. In fact, I actually just masked it to the butterfly itself because again, as I said, the ISO was only ISO 500. So I felt no need to denoise this image. I just used Sharpen AI on it and I only masked the butterfly and the flower. And if I zoom into the flower here, you can see that flower is totally sharp compared to what it looked like from the original file. It looked like that. And now the flower looks like this. Pretty mind-blowing, wouldn't you say? I always get excited when I see the results I get with Sharpen AI. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope I answered my opening question for you, and I hope you're less confused now. When to use Denoise, when to use Sharpen and when to use both Topaz Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. And also remember, uh, Topaz Denoise AI is on sale now for $59.99 up until April 15th of 2022. And if you use my promo code, David Kelly at checkout, you'll save an additional 15% off. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.